Hi, I'm Melba and today I am super excited because I'm about to start my veggies. So I'm going to start growing not everything, just a few vegetables that I want to grow to feed my bunny and some other ones that take long and I'll go through those. Don't grow because other people are growing because it's still super early. Trust me, I've done it. I did it the year before last and I regretted it. My tomatoes were huge, flowering, ready to go and it was just too early because the soil gets here warm really, really late. So go ahead and take your time, look at the package really well, and I'll explain how to do that next so that you grow your seeds and don't have a headache later on in the season. These are the containers that I really love. I've been using them for probably three years or more and they always work really well for me. I'm a home gardener. I'm not a farmer or a master gardener. I have a tiny garden and I don't need to grow a huge amount of every single type of vegetable or flower. So these containers just work really well. I love them because I can see how the roots are doing and if they're too long, then I know that I have to transplant them. I can see if they're wrapping, starting to wrap and I know I have to also up pot them. And they have a little container and a lid that I can really watch them very well. Another way that you can grow is the containers. This is where the salad comes that I feed my bunny when I'm not growing seeds in the winter. A salad container here that I have and I just poked holes on it with a knife. You can be more fancy than I am, but I just take a knife and do that in order to have some drainage. I make around nine or 10 holes, just small holes, enough that I know that the water will drain without any difficulty. And once I have that done, then I know that that's gonna go inside another one. I'll show you how. But I just place my soil deep enough that it'll hold all the seeds that I'm gonna place in one container. You can't do this with everything because you can't split every single type of vegetable or flower. Some of them don't like that, but I grow things like cilantro and other things in that, and they do just fine. And once you have it in there, just pat it down. Don't press it super, super hard, but I pat it down so that it's nice and even, and there's a nice even surface for the seeds that I'm gonna place on top. I'm gonna grow pansies on this one because they're so tiny, they take a long time to germinate, and this is a great container to make a little greenhouse effect. Since I have enough space in here, I'm gonna add another one of my pansies. I don't care about mixing colors because I just put whatever color pansy on different pots. These are kind of the colors I have on my garden. So I'm just gonna sprinkle the other pansies in here until I have all of them. I have two packages in one container. Then pat them down gently again so that they make contact with the soil. And per the seed package, I'm just gonna sprinkle a little quarter inch a layer of soil right on top. And then I will press it down gently just to make sure it makes contact and then spray it. On this one, I'm gonna put vermiculite on top just because I know it's gonna be here for a really long time. It just always gets kind of moldy if I don't, so I prefer to put a small layer of vermiculite. Now I have my second container of salad that I bought and I just place some water on it. Don't let it sit on the water forever. Just look at it a couple hours later and see if there's still water in there and just discard it. Don't ever let the water just sit because it starts getting diseases. As I take with everything, I make sure I label. I am notorious for not labeling and then I don't know what I'm growing. So I'm trying to be good and label my seedlings. And then you take the top and place it and you have the effect that you're gonna have for free. Isn't that great? I love this. The salad, we get so many of these during the fall and winter for my bunnies. So I am so happy that I can use them. Another one that you can do is little cups. If you don't have pots to grow anything and you don't wanna invest right this moment, go ahead and get cups, put a hole on one of them, and then you water over here, put it down, and it will go ahead and self-water. This is where your soil will go on with the seed. Go ahead and put some saran wrap to go ahead and give it a greenhouse effect, and it works really well. 
there's so many ways that you can grow seeds so do not think that you have to buy a bunch of equipment to do it and to get started this is the soil that i use i do gmb seed starting soil this is all i use when i grow seeds seeds don't need a lot of nutrients they have what they need within the seeds so i find that if i use the seed soil it works just fine i make sure that it's in good condition when i open it so look at it make sure it doesn't have any mold or anything strange on it because that can harm the seed or it could just give you gnats if you're very concerned about it i sometimes have used boiling water and i pour the boiling water and cover it with foil i learned that from a youtuber here years ago i can't remember who it was but it does work i just don't get gnats or any issues with it so i just pour my soil into the container and make sure i have what i need so let me get another bag i think i'm gonna use two bags today Once you have your soil in, I'm gonna pour water and get it really humid. Now I feel for it. I don't want it to have a whole lot of things in it, like little sticks or things. This is pretty loose and really nice. It's humid from out west, so it kind of clumps up, you can see, which is nice. It does have a little bit of stuff in it. Uh, so just kind of look at it. It's not much, so I'm okay with it, but it holds but i think it can use a little more water i prefer to add the water before i put it in my container so i'm gonna do that now if it's not wet enough and i feel like it's still not after i sow this it's not wet enough i go ahead and spray it so i'll show you the whole process if i'm gonna store it i do use this container i like it because it has a container that has a hole so the soil breathes so when i cover it i don't want mold growing on it so i prefer to have an opening on it and this seems to work really well. So I just use some water from the tap water and I use whatever I, I can get. I'm not too picky on the temperature. Don't pour the water all at once, just do it little by little so that you control how wet the soil is. So you don't want it wet, you just want it damp so that when you place the seeds, it's nice and ready for them. I prefer to do this because when you pour the water on the seed tray, the water sometimes spills out. So now when you grab it, it holds a little better. I think that's good enough. As long as you don't want it where you squeeze the little pack of soil and it's just dripping wet. You just want it to hold. You can see it clumps up. To me, this is plenty. So I am going to stop there and this is the soil nothing else that i'm going to use for now to go ahead and sow my seeds i fill each tray and i do pack it down a little bit so that there's no air pockets in it and that way the seed always has good contact with the soil but don't press it so hard i don't like to press it super super hard just be gentle pack it and take your fingers and just press it down little by little until it's filled up the seeds I'm going to grow right now are the ones that take quite a while to grow or because I want to grow them to start feeding my bunnies and quails some food. So I'll grow them inside for now, but I can still place some of those uh, outside early on in the spring. I don't have to wait until the ground gets warm enough. So one of the ones I'm going to grow right now is petunia. It takes forever to grow these beauties, so I am going to get those started. And because my bunny likes it, you don't have to. I'm going to grow some basil and I'm gonna grow cilantro. This takes forever to grow and these are a little older seeds so I am gonna start them early and see if they're they're good. The ones that are gonna come out after are all my peppers because they take forever to grow here. It just stays cold pretty late and my tomatillos and tomatoes. And I want to say to the person that who brought it, I said I was going to grow one tomatillo and she's so right. I grew two last year because you have to have two to pollinate. I completely forgot when I was talking about it. So I really appreciate you bringing that up so I wouldn't have only one and no tomatillos this year. So right now I'm going to do the petunias. And what I forgot to tell you is I really want to do this pansies. And they both take a while to get going. 
surface sewn. So go ahead and place them on the top. The seeds, they stick to my finger and I'm just gonna surface sew each one. Put a couple seeds on each cell. They're the tiniest seeds I've ever seen. I can barely see them. And it's okay if you have more than one. I always split them later on when they germinate. Some plants don't like, like sweet peas, they don't like to be split up. But some other ones like pansies and these, I think they're okay. That's it. And then I'm just going to try to make sure that they make contact. They don't need to be cored or surface sewn. And now I'm going to just spray the top to get them moist. I already have the soil that is nice and damp. My container and you can put some water down here, which I will do. And then you take the lid. I make sure that the holes are closed so I rotate this piece. Make sure it's closed. And I heat mat because it requires I think 75 to 80 degrees so you want to use the heat mat but super easy. So I'm going to water on the bottom. I need to get some water and that is all it takes. It tells you in the back how to sew them. Sometimes it's on the edge, sometimes it's on the information on the back, but it also tells you how long they have to be indoors before you place them outside. So this is eight to 10 weeks. So once you look at your last frost day, you go back the eight to 10 weeks and that's when you can sew them. So for me, I know from experience that these take so long and I want them to be in really good shape. So I may, I'm going a little bit a few more extra weeks to do it. The same with the pansies. They just, for me, for some reason, they just take a long time to germinate. But do look at the back of your container. They all look different. They have information sometimes on the front also. And just go get some water. If you have found value so far on the video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel to get to more people and create a little cozy garden community. I love being able to grow multiple seeds. Another way to do it is you get a larger pot and you throw your seeds right in. I growing cilantro on this one. Another one that I like to grow like this is ground cherries. Ground cherries do not want to be dry ever while they're germinating. So this way you can control it a lot easier since they all require the same maintenance. The cilantro needs to have a little bit of soil on top, but remember that every seed is different. So take a look at the package and see if they need light and just be surface sewn or if they need a little quarter inch on top of soil or half an inch. And then I go ahead and spray it again. This is the same way I'm going to grow the basil. There's a bunch of basil seeds right on the same surface. And then I'm going to cover them very gently. So take a look at what seeds you're growing and if you can grow them like this because they don't mind being split in two when you're having to divide them and they don't mind the roots being shaken up a little bit. It works really, really well. If you want to start and you are a little concerned of starting seeds and you are still not sure how to do it, I would grow lettuce. It is the easiest thing to grow. Put a couple little seeds on each cell or you can put it all in one packet. They don't mind being divided and grow your lettuce. I end up putting a small layer, just a quarter of inch little layer and go ahead and spread water below and keep it damp like this while it's germinating and keep it two inches from the light. So they are really, really easy. It is one perfect seed that you can grow if you have never grown any seeds. So let's talk about true leaves. I leave my seedlings to grow. The first set of leaves that you see here, those are not the true leaves. Those are the babies. 
and it takes around 3 to 14 days for you to get little germinations on your seedlings depends on the seed but I don't touch them you'll see this first set of leaves that they don't look like the real leaves of the vegetable but at least you have something growing and then you can just leave it there until it gets a couple I like to wait for a couple set of leaves unless I see that the roots are really wrapping around now you'll see how they start getting leaves that look like the vegetable you're growing you see these here that have two sets of leaf one is the set of leaves that is the baby leaves and then the next one start taking shape on what is truly the true leaf let's talk about the cover the little greenhouse effect that you have going on I go ahead and leave it down and close until I see one or two already germinated. Then I open the vent some so that I allow airflow to happen. Once everything that has germinated that you think nothing else is going to go, you want the lid to be removed so that you don't start getting mold. This is an example I use cellophane to go ahead and cover and I have multiple seeds in one container. It just makes a little greenhouse effect and look how many germinated. Now I'm going to wait until the true leaves come up and then I'll go ahead and split them and transplant them. When they're looking kind of like this, they have all the true leaves that look healthy and ready to be split. This is one that has the baby leaves and in the center they're starting to get the true leaves. This here they're only the baby leaves the true leaves have not started you see here how it's starting to get the center leaves which is the true leaf so you have to be patient and wait for a couple of those to come up transplanting i will be discussing on another video but it is really critical that you get this first phase to work out really well so that you have a healthy seedling that you're transplanting into a new pot that's the correct size with the correct soil so we will go through this process so that you have gray seedlings to be ready for your spring gardening. We will look at the type of soil that you use and how to go ahead and place your seedling and depending on the seedling how deep to place it in the pot. I will be showing you my grow rack setup but don't think you have to have it i'm not going to go over every single little thing i have just a little overview so that you know and have some idea but on another video i'll go more in detail my grow rod is about 17 inches deep and i like it because it's what fits on my grow area in the garage it holds everything that i need as far as starting seeds and also is the perfect depth to have individual mats i don't use a large one i use smaller ones that i place vertically and that way i have more control of what i put on what heat mat and when i remove it you don't want to keep your seedlings once they germinate on the heat so this gives me a lot more control than having a large one in the space and being able to damage the seeds once they germinate I use pots that I buy and others that I use in recycling when I buy plants at a landscape place. Use what you can and save money. I have also tried biodegradable type of pots and I will be honest with you, I do not like them. I use the cocoa core when I grow okra because they don't like the roots disturbed and when I'm going to plant them, I cut the bottom. But I find that they just don't do well and I don't, I just stop using them all together. I've also used uh, paper cups and I find that they get a lot of mold and they just do not withstand to anything for very long. I keep the lead about two inches from the seedlings. You may have to place your seats on top of a box or something, but a two inch gap is the best thing to have to not have little leggy seedlings that don't do very well later on. Here's an example of some that got really leggy on me and I was able to save them, but it's better if they don't do that. Another aspect that is important is having a fan on either side of your shelf. So I have it on both sides, but you can just have a fan somewhere so that it allows movement. And then go ahead and rub your seedlings. This will make them stronger. That way they get used to it. And when you place them outside and there's some kind of wind, they don't just fall over. Growing seeds is an incredible experience. It is important that you go through the process and enjoy each step of it. You have to watch those seedlings. Don't waste your money by just placing the seeds and not watching them. 
every day after you sow those seeds you're gonna have to look at them to make sure they're doing well as far as water or any algae or anything else that comes up if you take care of them from the beginning really well once they already are established it's a lot less work and you will not waste your money always remember to keep living your dream in that small garden